The following is a live copyrighted presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for Radiolawtalk.com with your host, Frederick Penny, attorney at law. And now, Radiolawtalk.com. Welcome, everyone, to the third hour of Radio Law Talk. If you've been listening in for the first two, we've had a rip-roaring time. If you haven't, you can catch all the previous episodes on our podcast. They're usually uploaded when? About Tuesday, Wednesday of the following yeah, usually week? Usually by Tuesday of the following yeah. week. Yeah. We, we've had a great time talking about various lawsuits, the Trent Brown case. We've talked about... Oh, what a Tyler Skaggs. We've, Judge Judy. Judge Judy, you know, just... You had to put the seatbelt on or you're going to fall off this train. That's a weird metaphor. Uh, Todd Cunin here with Denise Dirks. Fred Penny will be joining us back here in just a smidgen of time. Cal Hunter behind the glass. Cal, how are you? Well, I thought I was fine. Then I just dropped an hour and panicked. Denise nearly gave her a stroke, but otherwise everything was fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's where we're at. And Fred, what, what's 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 on in Fred's world? Oh, I went to the bathroom and I'm feeling better. <laughs> no, you look lighter. I am a lot lighter. I didn't know that with that that when you flush the toilets, it splashes up. Well, you know, Alex, That's... I'll take TMI for $5,000. Yeah, I'll <laughs> second that one. Is that the daily have... double? It, it was. <laughs> also the most common way flu viruses are spread, by the way. Just you know what? I, I actually <laughs> knew that was happening. I said, I'm sure I'm late, but Todd and Denise will handle it just fine. <laughs> Uh, you know, hey, Cal's doing quick takes. I might as well stay in the bathroom for sure. a while. Why not? Did you, know, did you know, just just really quick, did you know that you know the uh, push button, the air dryers uh-huh, and stuff uh-huh. supposed to be more sanitary? They've actually proven those are less sanitary than using the actual uh, tissue to, to do your hand because of all the stuff it collects in the air and throws on your hands. So, Besides yes. which, the button is like the can opener thing. It's like the dirtiest inch in the back, that little where you push the button. Yep. Everybody's germs are on the button when you push it. Yeah, hey, you want to talk about law, radio law talk? We'll talk ah. about germs. We'll talk about buttons. We'll talk about bathrooms. Today, we're going to talk about a couple <laughs> of other things, though. We're going to talk about Jeremy Renner's... Uh, Loss. I mean, his his divorce, and yeah. Denise is getting into that with uh, in the custody fight with is it's Sony Pacheco is is what is her is is Pacheco what, Pacheco yeah. is his, Pacheco. is his wife, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, um, yeah, th- we've got like uh, Johnson and Johnson, all those talc lawsuits that are coming against them. They're winning the appeals uh, at the appellate court. We're going to talk about those appellate courts. We're going to get into about talk about uh, the vaping. Uh, we got to talk vaping. We've saved it for the third hour. And then if we have time, we'll get into Facebook. But uh, what everybody wants to hear on Radio Law Talk and comment on, it's 855-LAW-RADIO, is case or no case. And guess what? Before you roll it, Cal, the point is now 49 Fred, 47 Denise. And at 50 points, ladies and gentlemen, the other co-hosts or hosts have to buy a steak and lobster dinner of the one that wins. And it was initially going to be made a dinner, right. but, um, but Fred ups the This is going to be a double points. It doesn't matter if you triple, quadruple, zipple, zip, dipple, I'm going whatever. I'm to give Ch- Todd the chance to risk all of his points, double or nothing. What? <laughs> I'll no. take that. No, I will take I'm that. Kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, do come that. on. Right. <laughs> Roll it, Cal. I gave him some hope. <laughs> now it's time to play Case or No Case. Yay! All right. A woman goes to Las Vegas. She's a vegan. Oh. And she goes to police because her friends did a nasty turn to her. Uh Uh-oh. Yes, it was a bad thing. She was in Las Vegas. She got (laughs) inebriated. And they fed her (laughs) chicken nuggets while she was drunk. Wait a minute. Do it again. I want want you to do that again. Yeah, they they fed her uh, chicken nuggets while she was drunk. It's a true story. The woman who wrote an anonymous post on Reddit said she's been a vegan for a decade. Then she then she found out where meat comes from, you know, all of that. She went on to say she thought that everyone in her life respected her decision. But a few nights ago, she was out with her party while she got white girl wasted, to use her words. She said her friends thought it would be funny to feed me chicken nuggets as a prank. She asked if they were vegan, and they said, yes, they were fed by the sun. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and nice. She, and she ate them anyway. She said that she found out the truth when she checked on Snapchat. The story alleged 
them showing the woman the nugget packaging, giving nuggets to her and later mocking her and pretending to be her when she found she ate meat, fake crying and yelling, oh, the chickens, the chickens. <laughs> you know, like that. Oh, there <laughs> we go. <laughs> she probably thing. never felt better in her life after that. Right. She posted she took a stream recording of the video, took it to police on the grounds of food tampering, and now all of those peaceful people are going to be in trouble, she says. And so I ask you, Denise Dirks, case or no case? <laughs> <laughs> she was so upset, she threw up all over her leather jacket and suede shoes. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, driving your car with leather seats. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. I think you should keep playing the chicken every while well, with this whole segment. I can't help it. It's too good. Yeah. Yeah. That is the best. What, what say you, Denise? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, this is one of those that just sounds like a scenario, but it's not a case. Okay. And, and and I've heard this before from somewhere. I was trying to figure out where I heard this. Might have been on this show, but it wasn't this exact story. So it wasn't. Right. Yes, exactly. So I'm going to say it's no case. Hmm. Okay. Fred Penny, what say you? Well, I've got a couple of comments, All and right. they're anecdotal, <laughs> but it's very important. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Number one, the rule is what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So this is all <laughs> not relevant. It is does not get out. It shouldn't be on the news because what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Totally agree. That's the first thing. Yeah. The second thing is I have actually experienced this. Now, those of you who might get mad at me, I love that sound. Keep it up. Just keep okay, doing it. Um, I actually witnessed this. I know a vegan, and I'm not going to get in details, but this is a very good person. And uh, we were at a restaurant, and it was a huge event. And they brought in spaghetti with marinara sauce. But they didn't know that it's a marinara meat sauce. He says, is this a marinara sauce? Yes, it is. Isn't it marina sauce or yeah, something? Yeah, it's marina for her. <laughs> but you know what? So as I sat there, this vegan, I looked, and he was pounding it down. I mean, pounding it. So, wow, this is good I mean, this stuff. Is, huh? I mean, he, I, no, he actually commented, this is really good. And I, and, and, I'm, and I looked, and I said, do I tell him? I, just, I remember saying, mm, nah, let no, him just go at yeah, it. Yeah. And I'm tell, I, to this day, this person does not know, unless they listen to this show, <laughs> that they ate meat sauce, <laughs> meat, uh, ground up meat in there. And, uh, as far, and they're going to find out, and they're going to sue you for not disclosing that the meat they're was already in the no, no duty. Yeah, there was no duty. If I don't no. have a duty to save a drowning person, I don't have a duty to tell a vegan they're eating meat. Look at that. I, you should have seen my face. It was just kind of like one of those, uh, like when the dogs, you blow the whistle, the left left turn. That was like, okay, whatever. Reggie? I'm going well, uh, to follow Denise. It's a scenario, but not a case. All right, Mr. Kunin, what say you, my friend? I'm wagering all my points. I'm going to say it's a case. You know, Cal, I just I thank you for these nuggets of wisdom that you give our way. <laughs> Get you know, and, and I think that maybe the friends, it was very foul what they did. I agree. But, oh. uh, yes, it's a case, and I'm going to say she collects something, you know, nominal fees. Pillow full of feathers, as yes, it were. Yeah. Chicken you know. nuggets, free chicken nuggets for life <laughs> at McDonald's. Uh, yes, that, that's right. That's Cal, right. how much time do we have? Not a lot. Not uh, a lot. Well, I'll I let mean, you just take us yeah. out, I, Cal. I, I we'll could, be back. I could give you the answer. We're going to wait. No, There's let's much wait. More we're going to talk about wait. Jeremy Renner and his big explosive divorce coming up. Cal, you take us out. I'll do it, folks. Uh, you stay tuned. We'll have the answer to case or no case and more coming up next right here on Radio Law Talk. Don't go away. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. I am Cameron Levitt, Chief Operating Officer of Concussion Medical Clinic. California's first concussion medical clinic is now open. As concussions increase each year, there has never been a greater need for concussion specialists. Our physicians at Concussion Medical Clinic are board certified in pediatric neurology and sports medicine and have partnered with universities, hospitals, and rehab clinics to expedite the recovery process. Simply put, we are elevating the standard of care. When you need an expert concussion opinion or concussion care, visit concussionmedicalclinic.com to schedule your appointment. This is Denise Dirks. We can represent clients in divorce, legal separation, child and spousal support, custody, termination of parental rights, step-parent adoptions, guardianships, and even conservatorship matters. Call 1-877-886-7186 for a consultation. The law offices of Denise L. Dirks provide family law services in Northern California. When the law affects your family. Call 877-886-7186. The family of attorneys at Denise L. Dirks is here to help. 
Jason Ross back here with Fred Penny, managing attorney from Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. Now, Fred, what type of cases are you dealing with now, and what sets you apart? Jason, we help people with all types of personal injury cases. We're former insurance company trial lawyers. We understand the other side, which gives us a distinct advantage over our competition. Remember, we don't get paid unless we win. That's Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers with locations throughout California. For a free consultation, go to pennylawyers.com or give them a call 1-800-616-4LAW. That's P-E-N-N-E-Y lawyers.com. I've got to get my car washed. This dirt, it just won't do. But I don't have no time today. I don't know what I do. Man, I know this place right down the road. Quick, quack, car wash. Uh -huh. Hop inside, let's take a ride and watch this cat and shine. Just come and see, I guarantee your ride will steal the show. Come on, quick, quack, car wash. Don't drive that dirty car. Uh -huh. Quick, quack, car wash. They'll have you looking sharp. The cost of getting rid of garbage is high, and recycling products is lucrative. If you're a business or know of a business that needs an individual compactor or baler, call Northwest Compacting at 888-201-0911. If you already have an industrial compactor, baler, or shredder and need service, don't forget to call Northwest Compacting at 888-201-0911. Northwest Compacting, your full-service industrial compacting and bailing company. Read more about them at northwestcompacting.com. Many women have so many clothes in the closet, but then we go to get dressed and find we have nothing to wear. So ah! We've all been there. We all want to be comfortable and fashionable at the same time. And it's difficult to find clothing that makes that task effortless. But at Letty & Company, you can find trendy, comfortable clothing that is affordable. Things you want to wear every day. Shop with a purpose online with free shipping. Just go to lettyandcompany.com. Lettyandcompany.com. Chris. Can you put the video game controller down for a second? I can talk and play. Oh, I'm totally annihilating this punk kid in Nebraska. I just feel like you're not acting like a grown-up in our relationship. Am too, am too. Well, you know, you still ride your skateboard to work. There's the comic book collection, the race car bed. Look, I'm young at heart, but I put money to my 401k every paycheck. I picked up a few savings tips at feedthepig.org. I have control of my financial life now, and that feels pretty grown up. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. Putting some money from every paycheck into a savings account or contributing to your 401k can make a big difference later. For free ideas and easy tips on ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. So, I bet I look like a grown up to you now. Well, except for the footy pajamas, I'd have to agree. This Are you serious? This is Radio Law Talk with Frederick Penny. During the break, we were watching Todd, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Mark Asborn's uh, <laughs> uh, commercial where it shows him eating a donut. you got to watch it. It's actually I, really I would good. just say for the record that I have lost. Um... Are we early a little bit, Cal? Yeah. Uh, we're doing fine. We're not bad. Yeah, we're about a minute early, so okay, stay let's tuned. Wait. Yeah, we'll, we'll, stay tuned. we'll stay tuned. We're a little bit early. That's yeah, what we so thought. We, we can fill 30 seconds here. All right, we'll yeah. fill 30 seconds. Hold on. So, yeah, we're so we're live right now, right, Cal? No, we're live. Well, we're live it's, on in the... some markets. We're live okay, on streaming, yeah. yeah. So we're live. So I have I have lost 30 pounds since that commercial. <laughs> wow. You know, so yeah. that you know, things yeah. have trimmed down a little bit, but I still eat donuts every day. <laughs> here we go. Hold on. We're going to roll. Okay, so let's rejoin our affiliates now, right now. Let's do that right now. There we go. <laughs> now back to Radio Law Talk. Here's Fred, Denise, and Todd. Cal Hunter is behind the glass. Thank you, Donna, his uh, uh, call screener here to help us. We're going to talk about Jeremy Renner, who is the... Were we talking about Jeremy Renner? Well, no, we were. Case did or we, no did case. we finish our case or no, no case? No, we didn't. That's right. We didn't finish case <laughs> well, or no I want to know what happened to the white girl wasted. Okay. <laughs> All right, let me, let me go back words. over this. Yeah. <laughs> let me go back over before we get into Jeremy Renner's. Uh, what happened is in Las Vegas, these friends went there, apparently friends of some sort, and one lady was a vegan, and they fed her chicken nuggets while she was drunk, and uh, she said she wanted to, uh, she reported to the police and wanted to sue them because she ate chicken nuggets, and 
The answer was, uh, there, this is a scenario, but not a case, according to Denise and Fred. And Todd said it's a case, and she wins. She, she, she gets something. Yeah, well, her friends nuggets. told her that they were sun-fed, and she bought it while she was eating them on the video. Okay. Oh, sun-fed. Oh, cool. Okay. This is so, it's <laughs> awesome. I just can't dip it in the sauce. This is really, really good. Yeah, Alcohol and some people just don't mix. So the yeah. question is, what do we have? Uh, do we have a case or no case? And the answer is she went and reported this to the police department, and they said, young lady, what you have is a civil matter. No case. Yes, Denise, oh. we did it. Yes, but you won. I won. I, there's a Fred. Do the Fred, Fred, Fred one. Because you got to do. Uh, keep playing that. Don't stop. Keep right, playing okay, it. Here we go. Keep doing it. Yeah, keep doing it. Just to let you know, Radio Law Talk World is third hour of the actual date of the 19th of October, 2019. I have one yes. case or no case, and I will be going to the most expensive, and I already know which one it is, a uh, restaurant in Northern California for my steak and lobster. And by the way, I'm just a steak guy. I don't like lobster very much. I'm not a big lobster. I'm with I will you have on that. a filet mignon, mm-hmm. nine ounce. And I want peppercorn sauce. What is this like the rusty duck, or where do you where do you? I'm not telling you. I'm not gonna say. I want I want my uh, uh, peppercorn. Oh, how how do you have your steak cooked? Medium well. Oh, medium medium well. well. Yes, Uh, yes, I ruined it. Oh my gosh, you do. Uh, Did you ever collect your win for last year? No, I'm waiting for Donna. You owe me spaghetti. (laughs) Okay, come here, come here. What's the answer to that, Mrs. H? Come here, Mrs. Oh, it's just calendar matter to Fred. You just have oh, to, you, have you to... better put it on your calendar, Donna Hunter. The, <laughs> last year, Donna Hunter makes famous spaghetti. Her spaghetti is so good, ladies and gentlemen. All of you, all over the world, are hearing this. Seriously, we're we're, we're heard all over the United yeah, States. Yeah. Donna Hunter, Cal's wife, makes the best spaghetti. I've heard nothing but great raves about it. It's fresh. It's homemade. It's not out of a can. And I still am waiting from last year for my homemade spaghetti from Donna. But I'm not going to let her know that. And I'll just think she'll do it on her own without me having. Well, to... in, in order in order to continue with the consistency of sequence, I think that before we go to any dinner with steak, that we should the, have the spaghetti. That the spaghetti should occur first. Uh uh-uh. uh no. I, so... I think Fred should hop in his plane, fly to. Don't Donna's tell anybody house. I have an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 get that dinner in the home of Donna. I mean, well, I'd love that. Now, by the way, I just want to remind you that my wife is the president of the National Procrastinators Association. <laughs> oh, is she? And she just canceled their annual meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Cal, good one. Good one. All right, that was case or no case. Now we can actually talk some law. Those of you who are sick and tired of us, I don't care what you say. We have so much fun on this program. It is the best program <laughs> in the country. Tell us what's going on with, and this is a Denise Dirks kind of one because it's about this divorce and about how uh, it's about a child. And actually, to tell you the truth, they're generally doing what's right for the child here. It sounds like they're, they're doing a good thing for the child. Is that correct, Denise? Well, they were, but yeah. now it yeah. appears that they got sidetracked. This Uh-oh. is Jeremy Renner. Jeremy Renner is of the Avengers Endgame. Um, he's 48 years old. And he married, like very suddenly, uh, a woman named Sony Pacheco. And Sony Pacheco um, and him were married for, well, she's thir- uh, 28, and they were married literally for three months. Yeah. 20, 20 years his younger. Yes. 20, uh, 2014 they were married. <laughs> yes, she's striking too. Yes, she is. Um, and they she had a child it. together. So literally they ran away and quickly married in September of 2014. They were married for October, November, and in December, Ooh. Pacheco files for divorce citing irreconcilable differences. She also requested the court to void their prenuptial agreement. That is a really interesting uh, uh, issue for trial. Okay, the question, Denise. Three months, why couldn't he claim that the marriage was never done and do, you could get a marriage, and you, instead of a divorce, you get what? If it's An short, annulment. An annulment. Why didn't he try for an annulment? Well, California, it's very difficult to get an annulment. Well, was you this have to California? show that, okay. yes, this is. And um, the reason that, that it's very difficult is because you have to either show that one of the parties lack capacity 
or one of the parties uh, committed fraud in the inducement to get the other person to marry them. And financial fraud is not inducement. You could say I'm a millionaire and you're not, and that's not enough. It's very difficult okay. in California gotcha. to get an annulment. Maybe the, the person was under age and couldn't consent. Uh, maybe the person had mental incapacity such that they couldn't consent. You know, those are the type of, of uh, matters that can create an annulment setting. But okay. for a divorce... It's um, it, 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 it always seems like it's going to make it easier if you have a prenuptial agreement. That's why people do them. Right. And I can only assume that the prenuptial agreement was there to protect uh, Renner's fortune because he's worth a lot of money um, and maybe some of the assets also for Pacheco. But f to ask to void it, to ask to void the uh, prenuptial agreement means there's going to be, in essence, more than one trial wow. because you're going to have to separate out that prenuptial agreement and it has to be determined if it's void or not and whether or not it's enforceable you have a question i, I do and we're, we're heading into the break when we come back so there's a common question out there or belief out there that oh my gosh let's say renner's worth 40 million and and they get he marries this girl and they only married for three months but if there's no prenup, she is now entitled to half of the $40 million fortune when they got married. When we come back, can you address the yes. whether or not that's actually the case and, and what a prenup would protect on a three-month marriage? Yeah, Yeah, of course. I, that's okay. exactly the, what's at issue here. It's going to be fun. And that matter will be bifurcated for trial, okay. whether or not the prenup is going to be. We're going to talk more about Renner when we come back and uh, his divorce. Actually, the... The daughter's going to receive a couple of bucks uh, by the time she gets 27. Join us in a few minutes. You're listening to Radio Law Talk on your favorite radio station. We thank you and also on radiolawtalk.com. We'll resume just a minute. Don't go away. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. Know someone with a drinking or drug problem? Learn how to get sober after we share these stories. I was 35 with two beautiful children when my life and addiction started to spiral out of control. After my divorce, I went into a depression cycle and started drinking more often and using prescription drugs. After my second DWI and arrest, my ex-husband threatened to take our children away from me. I was 17 when I became addicted to heroin and meth. I thought I could quit on my own, but I couldn't. It hit me when I was arrested. Get sober now. Your private insurance may cover costs and we'll get you here. It's simple. Just call Elite Rehab Placement right now. Please, don't wait. Your life matters to us. 800-918-1376, 800-918-1376, 800-918-1376, that's 800-918-1376. Warning, don't let your business get left behind in what is likely to be the biggest economic boom in recent history. If you need to build for your business to grow, call General Steel today for a pre-engineered steel building designed for your needs. No wasted space. Steel prices are expected to rise, but you can still lock in your price on a General Steel building. And you can still save as much as half the cost and time of conventional construction. As much as half. But you must call now. If you need a church building, office, warehouse, manufacturing space, retail space, or more. Call General Steel today. You can still get the General's 50-year structural warranty and General Steel quality, all at a price you can afford. So don't let rising steel prices put your project out of reach and stop you from making your company great. 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. That's 800-617-9312. Not all law firms have extensive experience in all areas of the law. It's wise to look for firms that have knowledge and understanding in your particular area of concern. So go to ProLawFirms.com. They have listings of attorneys in key areas of practice, such as family law, estate planning, personal injury, bankruptcy, and so forth. When you're looking for a lawyer that has extensive experience in your particular area of need, go to ProLawFirms.com. That's ProLawFirms.com. 
ProLawFirms.com is not a law firm and does not endorse or recommend any specific law firm. Hi, my name is Lily. My mom and dad used to fight about money all the time. Then one day, I heard them talking about this guy. Some uncle I never knew called Uncle Sam. Well, they say this Uncle Sam guy wanted them to pay him like a gazillion dollars. And they didn't have a gazillion dollars. So they called this company they heard on the radio called The Tax Doctor. And The Tax Doctor worked with Uncle Sam's people. I think they're called the IRS. And they're able to work it out so my mom and dad didn't have to pay Uncle Sam very much money at all. So now mom and dad are happy. And I'm happy too. Thanks, Tax Doctor. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state, call now and pay less. 800-263-2610. 800-263-2610. That's 800-263-2610. If you're one of those independent people who wants your own business and you love food service, we just might have a great opportunity for you. Iceberg Drive-Ins. Iceberg is famous for its thick shakes and delicious food. We lend you our supply chain and expertise, and you can potentially have a thriving, successful, fun business that your customers will love. Iceberg Drive-Ins has some prime areas available right now, so if you're interested, get in touch with us right away. Go to icebergdrivein.com and click on the Contact Us button. Iceberg Drive-In, ready to grow with you. 180 over 111, and I had a stroke. 145 over 92, and then I had a heart attack. 150 over 90, and I had a stroke. This is what high blood pressure sounds like. You might not feel its symptoms, but the results from a heart attack or stroke are far from silent. Get back on your treatment plan or talk with your doctor to create a plan that works for you. Go to loweryourhpp.org. Everything's changed. Brought to you by the American Heart Association, American Medical Association, and the Ad Council. Radio Law Talk. I like that Fancy show. Fancy Pants Peanut Butter? Fancy Pants Peanut Butter? A big screen television? You haven't even bought a sofa yet. A motorcycle? When your father finds out, he's gonna flip his shoes with two buckles? What do you even need two buckles for? Mr. Big Shot, buying whiskey shots for everybody in the bar. From the looks of it, I'd say nobody even remembers. Is this real life? Well, back to Radio Law Talk. Here are Fred Penny, Todd Kunin, and Denise Dirks. We are back. Real life. Uh, hanging out. I'm going to do a shout out to Melanie. Thank you for being here from Penco Media. She is following us around today. Going to do a behind the scenes Radio Law Talk segment. So go to www.radiolawtalk.com, or they actually have we actually have a uh, Instagram. Our Facebook page will show some of them, and she's going to throw this up on uh, a YouTube. We'll have some YouTube Radio Law Talk stuff. So thanks for being here, Melanie, and uh, taking care of us. So we were talking about the the uh, divorce of uh, Jeremy Renner, and 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 so. You're talking about prenuptial agreements that originally there was a an agreement in the divorce before he had the big run of um, what's the movie the big movie uh, he he uh, was he was in the, what's the Marvel franchise Marvel, Marvel okay before the Marvel he had agreed to to pay 156 thousand a year in child support well what happens is Marvel comes out and he makes a lot of money and in fact he made approximately $11.4 million in income from that, approximately. This is approximately. Um, and so they said, you know what, you're going to have to pay a little bit more. Uh, they go back to see if they're going to pay a little bit more child support, correct? Right? Yeah, this is, this is um, um, the child support in California is a guideline support amount based upon the income of the higher earner. And in this particular case, when he had that extraordinary income, he decided to opt in to claim himself as an extraordinary high-income earner. And when you do that, that means you get to opt out 
somewhat of guideline formula and you guys they they agreed to a different method perhaps gotcha. or so in this case what he agreed to is a minimum of two hundred thousand dollars a year and anything that he earned over and above that then would be subject to him paying additional child support that would go into keep going uh, that would go into um uh an account for his daughter and for her educational funds, and then if there's more in that account after she's finished with her a higher education, then she's going to get it at 27. Uh, yeah. So, Todd, you had those questions earlier. Yeah, when, when we went into the break, we I asked the question, somebody's worth $40 million bucks, and they get married to somebody who, comparatively speaking, doesn't have any money or very little money at all, and they're married for three months, there's a prenup, even if they didn't have a prenup, how much... After three months of marriage, would the person who didn't have any money really be entitled to of the forty million the person had when they got married? Now every state's different, every, but in general, yes. California. Can I ask that, Denise? Can I try to answer that? I'm not a lawyer like you that I don't know this stuff, but I'm going to see if I'm right. Can I take a start? Sure. Stand with that? I'm going to see if I'm right. The answer is what that individual made during those three months time period. She gets half. There we go. Minus what they expended on the community. Yeah. That so would be right? generally, just generally the truth. So, wow. If there's no prenuptial, if there's a prenuptial, then they have the ability to agree to anything else. They can make the community property laws not apply to their marriage. And I would assume that Renner wanted to protect his assets and also perhaps his earnings and might have said there nothing's going to be community. You know, in other words, you keep yours, I keep mine, and we do not have to have a community estate. So generally speaking, when you see in some movie plot, and assuming it's a California marriage where, you know, the guy's worth a lot, marries the girl, they're married for a, a week and a half or whatever, they get the divorce really quickly. It's not like he's now got to write a check for half of everything he had going in. It's, a, it's an interesting movie plot. Yeah, really, really interesting movie plot, but that's not necessarily the way the law operates, generally speaking, right? That's right. Okay. And the other thing... The other thing that's important to note here is that this issue of their prenuptial agreement is going to be tried first and foremost, and they have to determine the validity. And in California, prenuptial agreements are disfavored under the law. You, it is they are not, they're not um, enforceable unless provision. So the unless is an interesting part of this. There's four factors. But here's, here's just a sidebar point here, and that is what Todd brought up, what I thought was fascinating, because what usually happens in the movie plot is the old man says, I'm going to give half of my stuff to my 21-year-old bride, right? And the other family members go, wait, that's our inheritance. You can't do that, Grandpa. And he does, and then the movie now takes another twist, right? Yeah, so, but in a situation like that, that's not a divorce community property thing. That's just they got married, and the Grandpa decided it's to a, go, it's to a go ahead and cha change his will and yeah. give yeah, it to somebody issue. else. Yeah. So. yeah, that's kind of a probate matter. So here's the important twist on this whole thing. We're not done with this. Uh oh. In September 2019, Pachenko filed a request for sole custody of the daughter uh, and asking for monitored visitation with Renner uh, of the daughter, and by the way, is now accusing him of all types of things. And again, she's these are just pure allegations on her behalf. Um, he has not, he, he denies them, but she's trying to claim that, you know, he stuck a gun in his mouth and shot into the ceiling while their daughter was in the room, that he had some drugs, cocaine laying around, et cetera, et cetera. This is where it's going to start getting ugly, right, Denise? Yeah, because now it has become a custodial battle. And um, that custodial battle is ugly. Uh, she claims that he tried to kill her or threatened to kill her and all kinds of allegations. And she's got to prove them. And that's what's going to happen. There is a hearing set on November 7th of this year. And they both have been ordered to attend child custody um, and visitation and mediation. Wow. And I'm not sure exactly... I think it's it's in Los Angeles, and that custody mediation is going to be confidential. It's not going to be reported to the court. I'm just going to check to make sure my math is correct here. So that we're talking about their, their daughter, Ava, and she is now six years old. 
They got married in September of 2014. Now, right. if I backtrack that correctly, that means she was about a year old when they got married. So the child had already been born when the two of them got married. So this isn't like it's a child that was born after they were married. It really has nothing to do with child support. He'd still be responsible for it regardless of when that happened. But it does indicate for those who think that he married someone that he had no prior contact with, and they got married in three months, and it was gone. No, they knew each other prior. They had a kid together, for crying out loud. Uh, bibli- right. Biblically, yeah. they knew each other? Yes, they well, did. They would have, if they have a year-old oh. kid at the time they got married, I would imagine so. I just didn't know right. what you were saying. Knew each other in the biblical sense. Well, I, well, I don't know what book of the Bible you're talking about, but I certainly think it might be interesting. Go. So the child <laughs> predated the marriage. Yes. And that means that you have to then determine the paternity or the parentage of the child in that matter, too. I suppose they have just agreed to that. Yeah, that... it doesn't appear that he's contesting paternity at all. No. Okay. Or that she is either. Well, we're going to be following this because there's more hearings coming up. But I, we have to get to the Johnson & Johnson. And not that we're, again, we're politically neutral. Johnson & Johnson has been hammered on these talc verdicts. Uh, and, and is getting these massive verdicts to get them against them. And by the way, they're going to the appeals court, and these things are all getting overturned on appeals. Plus, they had a recall of 30,000, I think, uh, cases of this talcum, this powder that allegedly had traces of asbestos in it. They just allegedly, a, allegedly, right. they just had a recall. For right. Some well, I'll tell you right yeah. now, they're still claiming and arguing that there are the facts are clear according to Johnson and Johnson. Baby powder is safe, and so in New York. A Missouri appeals court overturned. I mean, first of all, New York, they got overturned on one of the cases. And then a Missouri uh, court of appeals overturned a $110 million verdict against Johnson & Johnson in the uh, talc, uh, in these talc cases. Um, and, and now, apparently, there's a number of different other ones that they're be getting reversed. And the, the Missouri uh, court said that Missouri... They lacked authority to, um, in this case, citing a 2017 Missouri Supreme Court ruling that limited out-of-state plaintiffs' ability to sue within their state. This is going to the Supreme Court. There's oh, no question yes. that this is because I don't think that they could do that. I think that is um, a violation of the U.S. Constitution. Explain that. They and what, what's the violation? What do you mean? Sorry. I didn't think they could do that. I don't think that the Missouri – uh, legislators or the court can limit who can be a plaintiff in their courts. I think that that is going to go up to the United States Supreme Court and be a volative of, of the U.S. Constitution. The, you know, the Commerce Clause, the, there's like a bunch of clauses so, that would be yeah, So what they said is an out-of-state plaintiff cannot bring a lawsuit in Missouri. That's what and that's okay. Yeah, by the way, the talc cases... 15,500 talc powder cases right now going against them. By the way, Johnson Johnson being sued for talc powder, uh, the anti-psychiatric drug, pelvic mesh, and op- opioids. They're being sued left and right, and uh, they're finally winning some uh, some things going on here. Should have been a welder. Well, all i got to say is when we come <laughs> back, we're going to talk about a uh, vaping. We're going to get into the vaping thing. That is a big thing right now is what's going on with the vaping. We'll be right back uh, for our final segment, and we have quick takes. That's right. (laughs) Hopefully in the right hour this time. Stay tuned. There's more Radio Law Talk coming right up after this. Don't go away. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. Jason Ross back here with Fred Penny, managing attorney from Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. Now, Fred, what type of cases are you dealing with now, and what sets you apart? Jason, we help people with all types of personal injury cases. We're former insurance company trial lawyers. We understand the other side, which gives us a distinct advantage over our competition. Remember, we don't get paid unless we win. That's Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers with locations throughout California. For a free consultation, go to pennylawyers.com or give them a call 1-800-616-4LAW. That's P-E-N-N-E-Y lawyers.com. 
This is Denise Dirks. We can represent clients in divorce, legal separation, child and spousal support, custody, termination of parental rights, step-parent adoptions, guardianships, and even conservatorship matters. Call 1-877-886-7186 for a consultation. The law offices of Denise L. Dirks provide family law services in Northern California. When the law affects your family, call 877-886-7186. The family of attorneys at Denise L. Dirks is here to help. Hi, I'm Frederick Penny of Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. I bet you're tired of hearing lawyer commercials. So just relax and listen to music for a few seconds. When you or a family member has been injured, call 800-616-4LAW or see us at pennyandassociates.com. See, that wasn't so bad. I am Cameron Levitt, Chief Operating Officer of Concussion Medical Clinic. California's first concussion medical clinic is now open. As concussions increase each year, there has never been a greater need for concussion specialists. Our physicians at Concussion Medical Clinic are board certified in pediatric neurology and sports medicine and have partnered with universities, hospitals, and rehab clinics to expedite the recovery process. Simply put, we are elevating the standard of care. When you need an expert concussion opinion or concussion care, visit concussionmedicalclinic.com to schedule your appointment. I've got to get my car washed. This dirt, it just won't do. But I don't have no time today. I don't know what I do. Man, I know this place right down the road. Quick, quack, car wash. Uh-huh. Hop inside, let's take a ride and watch this cat and shine. Just come and see, I guarantee your ride will steal the show. Come on, quick, quack, car wash. Don't drive that dirty car. Uh-huh. Quick, quack, car wash. Many women have so many clothes in the closet, but then we go to get dressed and find we have nothing to wear. Ah! We've all been there. We all want to be comfortable and fashionable at the same time, and it's difficult to find clothing that makes that task effortless. But at Letty & Company, you can find trendy, comfortable clothing that is affordable, things you'll want to wear every day. Shop with a purpose online with free shipping. Just go to L-E-T-T-Y and company.com. Letty and company.com. When you were a little kid and you thought about what you wanted to be, teaching was at the top of your list. But things changed. And as you got older, teaching didn't seem like the best option anymore. So you're thinking you'll be something else. But what would your 12-year-old self say? Now you want to be a doctor. You don't think teachers save lives? 25 at a time. An actress? Try playing a different role every time the bell rings. How about a scientist? Ever heard of physics, chemistry? Who do you think teaches that? Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, and taking learning far beyond the four walls of the classroom. It's time to recognize that great things are happening in teaching and put it back on your list. Don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. Find out how you can make more at teach.org. Make more. Teach. Brought to you by Teach and the Ad Council. Boys are weird. You're listening to RadioLawTalk.com. And now back to your host, Frederick Penny. I think Cal's weird, not boards. Thank you. Cal's weird. Michigan judge is blocking the flavored vape ban. So if you listen to us uh, quite frequently, last week we talked about a New York judge threw out the, quote, executive public health emergency that the New York uh, governor said that uh, stop all vaping uh, sales of the, uh, like, bubble gum, the ones that are, are they, they say are leaning toward uh, having children want to vape. There was a bubblegum one, a cotton candy one, and the judge threw that out. And now this week, a Michigan judge throws out the same thing that the Michigan governor uh, claimed an executive public health emergency to stop people from vaping. And they said, no, you can't do that. In fact, what the judge did is what's called a preliminary injunction. This is Judge Stevens. uh, That, uh, in, In other words, meaning that um, you can't stop these sales until you know you, you get a case 
uh, the, and the case is going. Uh, there's a number of lawsuits against these vaping. It's called, what is it, uh, Yule, Y-U-O, Juul, J-U-L-L Labs. Juul's the company, right. Yeah, yeah. J-U-U-L Lab. And so the interesting thing here is this. This is what I found, thought that, okay, I, you know, first of all, you can't just go and say, you know, unless it's a real emergency, you know, you can't sell vaping products. The, the judge said that apparently at least this past February, the governor knew that there was this issue. And now for him to say it's an emergency, the judge said, no, if, uh, that's not emergency, you know, because it's February is when you knew this was going on. Yeah. It, you know, when you think about this and you think conceptually about the Constitution of the United States and why the United States was formed, there were, let's see, in the Declaration of Independence, three inalienable rights that people have by virtue of the fact that you exist. You didn't earn them. If you exist, there are three, there are several, but the three that are enumerated are life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. Right. And it doesn't say that you can only pursue happiness if it's healthy. It just says you can pursue happiness. And so when somebody comes in, when a, when a governor comes in, I see a judge looking at this going, well, you might disagree with what people do, but if people can smoke, if they can eat fatty foods, if they can do all this stuff that may be unhealthy for you, that's their choice and they can do it. And this is a little different than maybe a health hazard that you have no control over and you're exposed to. You know, if it's a, a health emergency because there's some sort of outbreak of a disease and people are trying to stay healthy and they have no control over it, you're talking about an activity that people willfully engage in. Now, you talk about the marketing of it to kids. I get that. I get doing things like that because of the influence. But when you pass a blanket law, that even prohibits consenting adults from taking a product, it just seems like it's a bit of an overreach and maybe contrary to the provisions in the De Declaration of Independence in the Constitution. Which takes you back to the baseball player, an adult legally responsible for his own behavior, takes medicines, ends up taking his own life, and parents want to sue the team. That's what you're talking about, first hour of the Angels yes, uh, yes. guy. Yes, just, Tyler, Tyler Skaggs. I think that ties together in that sense. But perhaps. that one argument, if I... It's illegal activity, but... Yeah. yeah, if I jump on the other side, the argument is, no, this has to do with children. Those were adults you're talking about. What they're arguing is this is affecting children because children are vaping. True. Uh, and especially, they go into the advertising issue. They're advertising, you know, uh, bubble gum and cotton candy vaping. And that's that's... The I'm going to say the loophole, even though it's not necessarily a loophole, that they're getting through to say that's why it's an emergency situation. It affects our youth. It, it, it is, and it, it, there has to be a way when you look at this. So you got two people that have positions. One position is it shouldn't be legal because it's a health hazard. The other position is, well, it should be legal because you're encroaching on that. You're encroaching on people's ability to consent to choose to do whatever they want. Well, at some point you have to say, how can we craft a solution where both interests are met. So that would be, instead of banning everything, you create, similar to what they did with the alcohol and tobacco industry, specifically the tobacco industry. Well, how about no ads on TV for vaping products, like you don't see ads for cigarettes? How about not intentionally marketing? I think it was Camel Cigarettes was sued several years ago. For the Joe Camel thing. Because right. they believed that that was intentionally targeting underage kids to make smoking look cool and stuff. Well, how about some of those restrictions as opposed to just banning it all together? So, Todd, you're saying that advertising uh, uh, candied cigarettes is pushing us to do uh, to, to smoke when I was like – in the 1970s. I would love those candy cigarettes. And remember back, and you guys won't remember this, I remember. Cal and I, remember that you used to have, you could buy cigarettes in the vending machines, put the money in, you just pulled the little thing and the sure. cigarettes dropped out. Sure. I, Cal I, was over there all the time, you know, pulling those things. He <laughs> so, didn't have any so. money to put in, but he was trying to pull them and drop I, them out. I remember the candied cigarettes. I remember a, a shredded bubble gum called Big League Chew. Yep. So yeah. that you could chew the bubble gum like your yeah. face. You know, and, and they've changed those oh, things but but yes the days uh, of, of smoking does, a fake cigarette does advertising have an effect on human behavior so Ab satisfying if it Fred. if it didn't nobody'd make money doing it cal <laughs> but let's let's be straight up on us cal and i by the way we do not smoke never we never have never have never have but yeah. cal 
I used to buy those. My dad, my dad smoked when he was. You know, a lot of people smoke in the '60s and my relatives '70s. All did, yeah. So yeah. here's the thing. Do you remember having those candies and using them and pretending? Yes. So I I did all the time. I'd get my dad would hand me the candies and I'd be yeah. sitting there and they're actually really tasty. And then I'd pretend I was smoking with the little yeah, candies. Yeah, you'd walk around dangling out of your lip like you're in a mobster movie or whatever. I, re- yeah. I remember yeah. buying them after school in elementary school in the '70s. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So this is a band. This is an interesting thing because there's many states that have done the ban yes. against this. And remember those women being t- uh, topless. That was also a ban on women being topless in public, That's right? That's Tenth so, Circuit, right? That is, that is just governmental Outrageous, overreach, I if say. ever I heard it. <laughs> yeah, so the, I, I, I think it's interesting that we were talking about bans because all of these ca- appellate courts are coming back and saying you can't have a whole out ban. Yeah. That just can't right. happen. It's, it's, it's not going to be um, upheld. And I do think this is one that may get up to the court. Uh, the U.S. Supreme Court, too, in so far as the states are concerned. Yeah, because you got Massachusetts and Rhode Island also banning these. And New York as yeah, well. Yeah. And then there is a different lawsuit against Jewel, though. You guys know now yes. they just filed a lawsuit. Be, uh, the mother filed for the death of her 18-year-old son because he did get it, um, addicted to Jewel, and he died. Let right. me tell you about that. that. Well, let's talk about that really quick. So the, the background is that this young man started vaping. In fact, they said he, he changed his – they said his his attitude changed, his addictions changed, and then he got addicted to not just vaping, but they said on the nicotine that he actually threw a refrigerator off a roof because he was so upset because he couldn't get his vaping um, um, materials. And then he apparently was vaping, went to his father's house. It wasn't like he vaped and fell over and died. And they he they they went to look for you know they went to his bedroom and then found he had died. And they're claiming. It was from the vaping, and that that's kind of the the background of of what's going on here. But let me bring up a, I don't know, Cal, you want to bring you want to say something, but let me bring this point up while we're on this. Let me tell you right now. I just want to give you some statistics. Let's talk about statistics. As of October 8th, the U.S. Centers of Disease Control, that's this October 8th, 2019, uh, and prevention estimated that e-cigarettes caused 26 deaths in 21 states. All right, now figure that out. 26 deaths in 21 states. The CDC, same thing, Center of Disease Control, said that uh, excessive drinking by teens causes 4,300 deaths a year approximately and costs $24 billion in the economic costs in 2010. And in 2013, excessive drinking by minors ages from... Uh, 12 to 21, 119,000 emergency room visits where they almost died. I was going to quickly say, California, this will be a county by county battle. My home county has decided to try to ban vaping on the county basis. Well, let's roll into that. We're at the quick takes. Let's so roll now quick let's do takes. quick takes, Mr. Penny. What's your quick take? My quick take is when Cal Hunter wants to make you panic, especially Denise at the end of every hour. Ask Denise to do a quick take. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to see her sweat a little bit. Todd Kunin, what is your quick take for today? If you win two million, a $2 million award claiming you were paralyzed in jail and then lose it and have to pay it back because you weren't really paralyzed and that was found by you causing a disturbance in the same town, you just might be a redneck. <laughs> go, go home and buy I, a recliner, Denise. I model myself after Sonia Sotomayor. Um, I lack patience. I can't wait two minutes to begin firing questions at Fred and Todd. There we go. See you next week. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Radio Law Talk. I'm your host, Fred Penny, with Denise and Todd. Thanks, folks. Appreciate you listening. You have been listening to RadioLawTalk.com. A copyrighted presentation of Radio Law Talk Incorporated.